Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your uh, invitation. Uh, thank you for uh, letting me be here. It's a real pleasure for me. Uh, actually, it's a second time for me to be in, uh, in Warsaw, uh, uh, or Warsaw, as we say in Slovak. And uh, first time, it was in 2011, I participated on Creative Commons uh, Global Summit, and now uh, this year uh, on uh, Copyright Camp. So for me, Warsaw is a real ex a city of copyright law. So it's a perfect place for me, so I hope it's not the last time. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about uh, my personal experiences, my personal experiences about copyright law in Slovakia. I will not talk about Creative Commons, I will not talk about uh, open access, but I uh, selected three stories uh, about uh, copyright system and copyright like, cases, not real uh, judicial cases, but rather, rather uh, cases of, of my personal uh, experience. Uh, first story is about missing money. Uh, the first story is about uh, private copy levies and uh, about exception uh, that is like very famous in uh, European uh, countries. Uh, private copy exception was uh, implemented uh, into Slovak copyright law even before the Information Society Directive was uh, uh, implemented. And I think that this is the system that has never worked properly and I think there is no future for this system of uh, blank tape levies. Uh, I would like to, to tell you ab about my like, personal uh, test, uh, if it works or not. Uh, in 2009, I completed my PhD thesis that was about uh, collective management uh, about collective management of copyright and related rights. And I decided, I was full of, exp of expectations, I was full of ideas how this, I will uh, improve the system, and I decided to make a test. So as I am the author of, of uh, many publications, I decided to apply to collective management organization for money. Uh, maybe you know, maybe you don't, that uh, this is a private copy levies is a part of uh, mandatory collective management and every offer, uh, regardless if it's a represented offer or not represented offer, may claim the money from the collective management organization for private copies. Uh, I think that 99% of offers uh, who are not represented by a collective management organization, they don't actually know about this possibility to claim the money. Uh, I was studying it, so I knew and I did. And what's happened? Nothing happened. For three years there was silence. Uh, after three years I received an e email and I got an information that yeah, after three years, I, uh, I should get some money, but actually I cannot. Why? Because it's such a small uh, amount of money that it's not impossible to send it. Because actually it was two euros 65 cents. So they decided not to send it to me, and they asked me to wait another year when the amount of money will be a little bit bigger, at least five euros, and they will send me some money. And I was just thinking that how is it actually possible? Uh, they are uh, collecting such a huge amount of money. Um, for example, the biggest uh, Slovak collecting management organization last year uh, collected 9.3 million euros. And what is a little bit strange on the system is that 25% uh, of this amount was used for administrative purposes. So 25% in, and in the year 2012, it was almost 27% used only for, for administration. And then I'm asking, how is it actually possible? How is it possible that they are collecting such an amount of money? And especially uh, regarding the blank tape levies, it's so, such a problematic system. We still don't know that, uh, on which uh, devices and on which carriers we should apply the, the blank tape levies. Uh, how we should make the difference between devices and carriers that are used for uh, business purposes and used for private purposes um, regarding the, the Padawan case. And there are so many other questions and um, I, I'm pretty sure that you have similar problems in, in Poland as well. And I think that this is really um, 
ridiculous that this is the system that, uh, that is valid for so many years and it's still not working. And unfortunately, I am pretty sure that this is the system that will never work in the future. Uh, the, la the, the other story is about the five-step test. I think that everyone who is sitting in this room knows the, the basic concept of exceptions and limitations that it's called a three-step test. Um, it means this is, the, this is the basic rule under, uh, under which you may apply the limitation in your national uh, legisla legislation, in your national copyright act. What's a little bit problematic in Slovakia, now we are preparing new copyright act, and they are, I, I must say that it's really uh, long and painful uh, delivery. Uh, it takes years actually, and one of the biggest problems is uh, the field of exceptions and limitations. But why we are talking about the five-step test? The problem is that when we implement the exceptions and limitations, we limit those limitations on a national level. It means that we not only take the uh, exceptions and limitations from the Information Society Directive into Slovak uh, law, but we also limit the limitations. It means that, for example, we don't only copy the pro provision from the Information Society Directive, but we also limit it, for example, only for uh, some kinds of works. Like, for example, private copy, we cannot make the private copy from um, uh, literature work, from architecture work, on, or from any other, from some uh, of other works. Uh, this is also a little bit strange because maybe you know what uh, does this number mean. Uh, this number means this is the number of uh, possibilities uh, how to implement the Information Society Directive regarding the exceptions and limitations. As you know, there are 22 exceptions and limitations in the Information Society Directive and 21 of them uh, are only uh, facultative, so it means that it's up to the national state, uh, either it will um, implement them or not. Uh, but if we limit the limitations on the national level, then it means that it's not only more than 2 million, but the number is much, much higher. And this is also not the, only the problem of the Slovak Republic, it's also the problem of other states. And what is said is that the rest of Europe is talking about the flexible system of, co of exceptions and limitations and about how to make uh, open norms and how to make uh, the, the access to culture broader. But Unfortunately, we still didn't realize that instead of, instead of a three-step test, we are actually uh, working on five-step test. And uh, the last story I prepared for you is about galleries and other infringers. Um, last year, I visited a beautiful gallery in, in Bratislava with uh, Simon Morrison, who was here uh, yesterday. Uh, it's a gallery that is... Uh, there are about um, 500 uh, work of arts, of modern and contemporary art, uh, that are purely from private sources. Only uh, from private sources, nothing is uh, financed by, by the state. And um, this is the great place, the, the building was renovated, it's in the middle of the, of, of the city center of Bratislava, you all are invited, it's, I really recommend. Uh, Everything was just perfect. Everything was proud that we have such a place. But one day, as you can expect, collecting management organization or a participant of such a collecting society came and claimed for money again. Um, of course, that such a, a gallery is not profitable from the, uh, just from the, uh, for uh, collecting the entrance fee and they ask for any balanced system, but the collecting management uh, just said that it's not possible, we want such an amount of money and there is no discussion for it. So what's the, the end of such a, like a denied access to culture? Those, um, those beautiful pictures, paintings will be somewhere in the cellar just waiting for the better uh, legal regulation and unfortunately we will just not see them because of the only reason that it's too expensive to, to see uh, those paintings that are actually uh, uh, in a private collection. 
So what's the future and what's the conclusion of my speech is that uh, based on the first story, I would recommend that we need uh, transparent and more uh, flexible and efficient uh, system of collective rights management. That's, I think, very, very important. Based on the second story, I think that we need uh, flexible and open norms for uh, for exceptions and limitations, no five-step test, but very flexible and open three-step test, or even better, something that is uh, typical for um, United States, like fair use doctrine. And based on the last, um, last story, I would recommend that we need a flexible copyright system, the system where offers will be protected, but where also uh, we, public will, will be have the access to, to culture. So thank you very much for your attention. In case uh, you have any questions, please send me an email. I will be glad to, uh, to send you my answer and we can discuss it later during the coffee break. Thank you very much.